Sandy Rios. Sandy Rios. Sandy Rios in the morning on AFR Talk. Sandy Rios in the morning, back with you. Thanks for joining us this morning. And listen, it's always a pleasure to introduce my next guest because he's one of our champions in the house. There's no question about it. I, there are so few men and women who come to that body and serve and maintain their integrity. You could count them really almost on one hand. That's the sad part of it. There is such a corrupting influence in this town. But uh, my next guest has managed to just keep his bearings uh, and remember who he is and remember who God is in all of this. And I'm always really uh, grateful to have time to talk to him. Congressman Louis Gohmert, by the way, is the vice chair of the Judiciary Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security, and he's the chairman of the Natural Resources Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations. He's a former chief justice of the 12th Circuit Court of Appeals, and he joins us this morning, I think, from Texas. Congressman, are you home in Texas? Well, actually, I was uh, briefly in Washington. I've been in Texas uh, and and uh, have some veterans events and uh, other events uh, today, tomorrow, and uh, this weekend. But we had a whole bunch of uh, World War II veterans come to Washington, and I flew up to give them a tour last night. Now I'm about to fly back to Texas. So uh, anyway, it was great being with all our World War II vets. They really are an inspiration. And and it does uh, take take you back to the point that there's been a time in our country when there was moral clarity, when evil was wrong and uh, freedom was right, and we didn't give up our, our, our security, or we didn't give up our freedom to buy security, but we were willing to fight the evil forces. You, you go read or listen to the uh, the radio address that that uh, Franklin Roosevelt gave, he prayed for like nine minutes, something like that, and he called uh, the forces we were fighting against evil, and uh, even a liberal like, like Roosevelt, he knew that there was evil that had to be combated, that it couldn't be placated, that it had to be stopped cold in its steps, and then you compare that to what our president's doing. We have got evil, beheading, killing, all kinds of heinous ways. We've got rape. We've got disfigurement. All these horrible persecutions of Christianity. And he comes on regularly and says, our biggest enemy is climate change. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just long for a day when our leaders, the very top leaders, have a sense of moral clarity. I was here in Todd Starnes. A uh, uh, little piece before you came back on, and he's right. We are in moral decay. And a few years ago, I brought that up on Sean Hannity's television show when we were talking about the deficit and overspending. Sandy, that's that's a matter of moral decay. For to have finally in American history a generation that has no problem spending future generations' money. We we. We used to be a country where the generation in charge had a number one goal of making the next generation's life better than our own. And now it's forget the next generation. We may kill them through abortion, uh, but even if we don't, we're going to spend their money before they ever have a chance to earn it. That is uh, immoral. It absolutely is, and that's that's where we are in our country right now. Well, that's true, and, and it's that's all the more reason why it's so hard for people who are principled in and out of the Congress here in this city to, it's just hard. We, there, we are few in numbers, but you know what? I, I still, I, w- I don't have any heart, even any temptation at all to compromise the truth. I'm just not letting go. I'm not going to do that, and I know you aren't either. You no, know, you, yes. you, re- you reminded me of a story. You probably know about this, but... I will never forget, my dad was in World War II, and in some study I was doing for some program I did, I came across this video of, uh, of Winston Churchill and Franklin Delano Roosevelt meeting on a ship out in the ocean. I think it was a private meeting at the time, and they had a worship service. They sang, Oh God, our help in ages past. They were standing, there was worship and prayer. It was just stunning. And I think it's good for us to stop and remember, I just read to my audience the story that you probably know, too, about this young black female Marine being court-martialed 
for having a scripture yes. verse on her computer screen. No weapon yes. formed against mm-hmm. me shall prosper, and she's being she's being court martialed. A congressman, isn't yeah, there? And, isn't there? And it, I know that there have been units that used, uh, uh, I believe, the ninety first Psalm, other scriptures as as their guide, as their motto. And it kept them going, it kept them together, it kept them alive. And uh, now to have degenerated to the point where we would prosecute somebody for having a verse of Scripture, my gosh, I've got on my desk uh, in Washington, I have a New Testament that was given to my uncle, and, and the cover page on the front is hard metal, and you know, a lot of them would put it in their pocket next to their heart and their stories of it protecting them. But regardless of physical protection, uh, you open the, the front cover, and there is a statement from Franklin Roosevelt commending the reading of this book that, that you know, generations have found is a great source of comfort and wisdom, and he's urging people to read it. Gosh, can you imagine the president putting a statement like that inside New Testaments and having them given away now. No, it uh, can't. Back then, you know, they understood that was our hope. And like Chuck Olson says, our hope is not going to arrive on Air Force One. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Uh, Congressman, I'm confused about something because uh, in in the House, and I, I now I'm losing track, but I think the Senate, the Defense Authorization Bill has been passed, and part of that, one of those mm-hmm. amendments, as I recall. Was, and it's not the first, I think it happened last year too, a provision that service members would have the right to express their religious beliefs. I'm sure that was in this recent reauthorization. How, how is it that this stuff keeps happening, given that the Congress keeps passing provisions, you know, saying, no, you, the, our service members can be free to practice their faith? I don't understand that. Sandy, I, I think you do understand it deep down. But the the truth is, the military seeks and gets all of its direction, formally or informally, from the commander-in-chief. If there is a practice that keeps happening that the commander-in-chief doesn't want to happen in all of the vast numbers in the military under his command, he would change that. He has the power to direct it. Just like George Washington gave an order that people could not take God's name in vain, because how can we ask for protection and blessing with the same mouth that's that's using his name in vain? So uh, that was George Washington. Compare that to where we are now. Uh, It's uh, it's quite a stark contrast. But all of, I mean, naturally, there are things that go on in the military, the commander-in-chief uh, would be upset about, and when he finds out, he makes sure it's corrected. But like you point out, Sandy, this continues to happen. And I, originally we had talked about uh, getting into the immigration from the Middle East, and I just want to remind listeners that uh, this same administration uh, that is <laughs> sets the, the path for the military, uh, they're also the ones who said they have totally vetted the Syrian rebels and that they are vetted moderate Syrian rebels, and they have been sending them weapons that continue to fall into the hands of ISIS. Uh, This administration did suspend shipments of heavy weapons for uh, three or four months because that kept happening, but then they went ahead. ISIS has our up-armored uh, vehicles, they've got our heavy weapons, and the poor Kurds are begging for any kind of heavy weaponry, but they can't get it. And this administration won't send it to them, and yet we keep equipping ISIS. And I understand the defense is, no, we're not sending them directly to ISIS. You're sending them directly to the people that give them to ISIS, that let ISIS happen. This is also the administration that completely vetted the older Sarniev brother, the uh, Boston bomber. Uh, remember, the Russians let the CIA know that he, he had uh, probably been radicalized, and then they let the FBI know that he'd been radicalized. And the most I could find out from our hearings with the FBI, what they had done, 
They talked to Sarniev himself, and he said he was not radicalized. They talked to his mother, and she said he was not radicalized. I, I got on to the FBI director. They didn't even go to their mosque to ask them if they were reading the uh, the the philosophers, the radical Islamists that ra- radicalize people, like Qutb's writings. Uh, Osama bin Laden said that radicalized him. Go find out what he's reading. Find out what he's talking about. And uh, anyway, it turns out the only trip they made to the mosque that uh, these guys were attending was in their outreach program to partner with them. They weren't seeking to, to vet Sarniev at all. As a result of their pitiful vetting, there were people that died and were wounded at Boston. So these are the people that we say, oh, we don't have to worry. You can send thousands and thousands of people from radicalized areas into directly into the heartland of the United States. But don't worry, we can't vet one individual radicalized bomber, but don't worry, we'll, ra- we'll vet all of these others for radicalization. They have cleansed their training material of the ability to understand what questions need to be asked to find out if people have been radicalized. You can't trust this administration to vet anybody because they've cleaned their training material. They don't know what to ask. And uh, the last thing we need to be doing is bringing thousands of people from radicalized areas into the heartland of our country. It's a mistake. Put them on a bus, send them over to other Muslim areas where they can accept the, the refugees. Uh, that, that's the bottom line, Sandy. I just heard a briefing yesterday. I think they are the refugee resettlement, whatever, who were they, whoever that is, is trying to bring in now 60,000 Syrians. And as you said, the FBI is saying, wait, we're, right. we're having trouble keeping up with the vetting. And we know how they vetted, as you know, this, as you just stated, the Tsarnaia brothers. But now here's the thing. There's the other headline. I'm, I wasn't going to bring this up, but I am now. Here, James Comey, head of the FBI, and Loretta Lynch, the attorney general, made Mm -hmm. a big deal yesterday out of uh, launching a full-blown offensive against the head of the World Soccer Association, expediting, you know, these men from other countries into our country because alleged, well, you know, perhaps they are corrupt, uh, but they've been using our system, you know, in a corrupt way, and how dare they? So they've been putting all these resources and the coming after the soccer organization, what is your take on that? Why would they do that? Well, we know with Nero, uh, he allegedly fiddled while Rome burned. Uh, America is being destroyed from within, and instead of fiddling, this administration is going after uh, people that don't really make any difference to the ongoing of a free republic. And uh, it, it's tragic. I mean, look, look what they're doing. They're going after police forces all over the country. Uh, this this Department of Justice couldn't find their rear end with both hands, and yet they're out there telling everybody else how they have to act. Uh, this administration has coddled racism, uh, reverse racism, all kinds of problems, and yet. Uh, and discrimination against women. You know, the Hillary Clinton State Department uh, didn't pay women equally for equal work, and yet they're out there, this administration, going after people right and left. And I know from personal experience, from helping whistleblowers that are just fantastic patriots, that this administration, if you dare rise up and say, uh, this administration is allowing radicalized Islamists to get away with murder, then they will come after you. They will not go after the radicalized murderers, uh, the potential radicalized murderers, or the terrorists being led into the country. Oh, no, they will come after you. This administration has prosecuted more people alleging that they leaked information than all of the other prior administrations in our history put together. That's the tool they use to silence people who see damage being done by this administration. Uh, It's a very, very dangerous situation in time in America. You know, I uh, just read, and I haven't even said at this mic, but I I know that you're aware of this, 
ISIS said last week, they were boasting, that they could, had the money to buy a nuclear weapon from Pakistan and transport it uh, to the southern border and get it across the border, you know, losing themselves among all the illegal immigrants, and that they could do something really very serious. Uh, we don't even need to fill in the blanks in this country. Can Did you hear that report, Congressman? And do you... Yes, yes, I did. And, and, uh, uh, the fact is, when this administration is coddling Iran, uh, trying to uh, just, I, I, I don't know, they're placating them in ways that no other American president would have ever dreamed. Uh, but the joke has been for some time now, if you wanted, if you really wanted to get a nuclear weapon into the United States, the best way to do it is put it into one of the bales of marijuana that's coming across our southern border, uh, and you'd get it in for sure. You know that. Contra- Unfortunately, that's not much of a joke. No, no, it isn't a joke, Congressman. Do you have a few more minutes? I don't want to presume upon you. Do you need to go, or can you stay with okay. me a few more minutes? I can make it till eight forty-five. Then I'm, I've got. To- Go to the classified area here to review the TPP. Uh, <laughs> the only slot they would give me. So uh, all right, the only we'll, slot I've got. All right, we'll come back in one minute then and just have a couple of more minutes with you uh, and uh, then okay. let you go into that Thank secret you. place and read that long thing because we need you reading it. This is Sandy Rios in the morning. My guest is Congressman Louis Gomert. We'll be right back. AFA has been a proud sponsor of Eight Days of Hope. And now, Eight Days of Hope has birthed a new ministry, Hope Reigns. Here's Hope Reigns director, Chris Childs. This new ministry will respond with skilled crews and laborers within 48 to 72 hours after a disaster strikes. So often in the immediate aftermath of a tornado, a hurricane or flood, victims wander aimlessly, unable to comprehend what has happened or what they should do. The purpose of our ministry is to help those victims with their immediate needs and to restore hope in the name of Jesus. We will bring able bodies, chainsaws, tarps, and the gospel. We want to help people continue their physical life and in some cases begin their new life in Christ. You can help by praying for this ministry. You can also become a Hope Reigns volunteer or give at 8daysofhope.com. And may the hope that is in Jesus reign in the hearts of disaster victims. The best time that we have with Congressman Louis Gomer before he goes into that little room and has someone standing over his shoulder making sure he isn't taking notes or carrying anything out and then following him down the hall to make sure he doesn't talk about it. Isn't that the way it goes down, Congressman? Uh, yep, that's exactly the way it goes down. And uh, here the founders wanted to make sure everything was open and clear, obvious about uh, treaties uh, so they they required that the Senate had to ratify any kind of international agreement, uh, no matter what you call it. And, and now this administration classifies these documents so people can't find out what's in it, what they've negotiated. And even this does not contain all of the agreement. We're told there, there may be another 20, 25 percent added. And that then even after we get the final, it's not final because uh, the administration is going to go through and edit and make any changes uh, that they feel is necessary. And as I understand it, that happens after we vote on it. Yeah, they still a, can go through and change things. Yeah, calling it a, what a living, it's living language. You know, it's a living. Oh, that sounds word. so dynamic. Yeah, that's what they're calling it. This is a living thing that you're talking about. Uh, so, Congressman, do you think yeah, there are enough... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of like zombies. It's, yeah, it's yeah. living. They just go with dead eyes all over the place. Yeah, yeah but, kind of like that. Uh, Congressman, do you think there are enough votes in the House to 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 give the president what's he want, what he wants on TPP and TPA? There, it's possible there could be, but I know that there are enough people from all over the country who are letting their Congress members know. You can't vote for something that you haven't read. You can't vote for something that gives the president the power to dock into this future treaties that will not have proper review by Congress. And you hadn't had proper review of this one. Heaven help us if you allow the president to 
add on to this or to insert into this other trade agreements with other countries, uh, including such issues as immigration that we talked about already. Yeah. I mean, what a disaster. And so because so many Congress members are hearing from people across the country, I'm not sure that uh, they're going to vote for it as they may have originally indicated. So people calling in, emailing still do make a difference. All right. Uh, so that's on the TPP. It's Trans-Pacific Partnership and TPA, uh, tra- Fast Track Trade Authority. It's confusing. Uh, but it's on our Facebook page because we Why have talked we about Why would we want to give this president any more authority than he already has? I mean, he's disregarded the law that requires him to provide us information. And yet we have Republican leaders saying, yeah, but this time he really will keep us in the loop because the law requires it. So do subpoenas, and he doesn't answer those. So uh, yeah, that's I, I just can't see it. No, I can't see it either. Congressman, I want to let you go because I want you to have plenty of time to do so Honestly, much, your Andy. serious business. Thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Talk to you soon. All right, Congressman Louis okay. Gohmert, and, uh, you know, listen, these guys that are fighting, they need all of our encouragement. When I hear people saying they're going to stop paying attention, we're just going to, you know, stop listening, I, I listen, I'm tempted to. I understand that, but we can't. We can't because there are people up here fighting left and right, and they need to know that Americans are standing behind them. All right, so don't quit. Don't give up. <laughs> As uh, Winston Churchill said, never give up. Never, never, never give up. Sandy Rios in the morning on AFR Talk.